Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Gould here. Uh, this week, if we were at school together, we would be doing some fun Easter things. So I thought that it would be fun for us to um, do a couple of those Easter things, even though we're not together. Maybe you can try some of them at your house also. I wanted to start out first with one of our animal nose stories. Um, Jake, are you watching? Jake had suggested that we read about bear noses. So I'm going to read that one first, even though it's not an Easter story, and um, then we'll move on to something else. So let's start with grizzly bear. If you are a grizzly bear, your nose would be packed with special smell sensors. No wonder this bear is a champ at tracking down food, sometimes from over a mile away. It needs to find and eat all the food it can before it has to, do you remember? Hibernate before winter. That's when a grizzly bear will go into a deep sleep and it doesn't eat anything at all. It says that bears are 100 times better than people at being able to smell. It said if you had a grizzly bear nose, you could sniff out all of your favorite goodies and only trick or treat at the best houses. So you would know which ones had your seer bear nose and you would smell and see which one had your favorite treat to enjoy. Hi, Dean. Hi, Savannah. So we'll save that for a little bit more for another time. The next thing I want to do is <clears throat> um, show you some Easter eggs. These are some Easter eggs <clears throat> that um, my family and I have decorated. So if you notice this one has some, some glitter on it. Cameron, do you know what color this one is? Green. I'm going to show you how to make this kind of egg in a minute. <clears throat> Emily, I thought you might like this one. Purple. A little bit of purple and blue in it. Here's another one. Katie, do you know what color this one is? You got it, yellow. Um, now these, I want to show you some other ones here that I made. Eliana, do you know what color this one is? You got it, blue. Can you see that cool design on it? These, actually I think this one is upside down. There we go. These are some cool ones that uh, my family and I made. We They had these little kind of plastic covers and um, a lot of these eggs were made, uh, decorated like people maybe would do if they were from Russia or from the uh, country called the Ukraine or Slovakia, which is where my family is from. And they're all these cool paper designs that you heat them and they kind of stick on there. I like this one. This is a black egg and I'll tell you how we got this one. This one is called a chalkboard egg. So it kind of has a material like you can do chalk designs on, and then we put this one on top. So I think that's really pretty. <clears throat> Cullen, do you know what this color is? You got it, blue. Has some birds on it. I like that one too. Reese, do you like that one? And then of course we have our regular Easter eggs. So these are just plastic ones. Purple one. Nolan, do you like this one? Blue. And yellow. And of course the pink one. So <clears throat> I'm going to show you a really cool way that if we were in school together, we would have tried to dye some eggs together. So I'm going to use this lighter color. I don't have any plain ones to show you. So these eggs actually are kind of neat. They're not real eggs. They're kind of made from like a cardboard type material. If your parents are interested and maybe if you can get them online, um, they are from Walmart and they're just kind of a cardboardy egg so you don't have to boil them. There's no yolk inside like a real egg and you can do all kinds of things to your egg. You can use markers on them, you could use stickers, or you can dye them like regular eggs. But I'm going to show you a cool way that we were going to do them. <clears throat> If you want to try this at home with your parents, you can. You get a little bit of dry rice in a bag. And then, yeah, their parent do this job because this is a kind of messy job here. You put some food dye 
into the bag. Maybe I'll start with about five or six drops. It's kind of a ex science experiment because I'm not sure exactly how much we need. And make sure you zip it up very tightly. You can do it in a bag. You could do it in um, a container that you can close the lid. And then here's the fun part. Ready? Okay. Uh, Mason, you were going to do this. I think you would like this part. Just shake it around. Shake, 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 shake. Adeline, do you see what's happening to the rice? The rice is starting to turn the same color as the food dye. So shake it up, make sure it gets nice and colorful. Okay, I think that's enough. So I'm gonna close up our dye. Okay. <clears throat> and then you take your egg. Okay, now I have a question for you. I have blue rice and a yellow egg. What color do you think our egg might turn? All right, Case, what do you think? So you drop your egg in, close up the bag, seal it up nice and tight, and do a little shaking around. Okay, Corwin, what do you think is gonna happen? <clears throat> Open it up and pull the egg out. Look what happens to our egg. You see it? Let's see if it's gonna get there. We go. We turned it a little bit green. Now we have some green speckles mixed in there. And the really neat thing is, parents, this is fun. Um, the egg is dry already, <clears throat> even though you use the rice in there. The egg the eggs come out dry so that's really fun the kids can use them right away you don't get a lot of um, dye on your hands <clears throat> you can layer multiple colors together those were some of the other ones i did these were some of the speckled ones we did <clears throat> excuse me if you use a lot of dye you can make your egg really dark which is kind of cool so anyway, that's the rice way that we were going to do our eggs. So maybe you can try that at your house this week if you have time. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to show you about eggs is a fun game that you can play. So if your parents have some plastic eggs, maybe less left over from last year from Easter, you can take the eggs and you can ask your parents to help you with this or you can try this on your own if you have some little pieces of paper. <clears throat> Oops, let me grab that egg. Hold on. <clears throat> okay, so you're going to take some of your eggs and on little pieces of paper you want to put some letters. So I did, oh, this is going to be backwards again for you guys. Uh, uppercase J. I know this is backwards again, lowercase G. And then take the same letters and do the lowercase to match. And I have the uppercase G here too. Okay, so you're gonna fold them up, put one letter paper inside each egg. Okay, one in each egg. Put my lowercase G in here. Close it up. My uppercase J in. And my lowercase J. And of course, eggs, if you heard them, are rolling all around. Then what you wanna do is take your eggs. You can do this by yourself, but it's more fun if you have someone maybe that can help you. So if you have a brother or sister that has a minute to help you or a mom and a dad that could help, and you're gonna hide them. If you, can, if you have to stay in the house, you can hide them around your house. My girls like to do that behind the bookshelf or under pillows or maybe underneath chairs, okay? So I'm gonna grab my other eggs. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to pretend I hid my eggs, and once you have all the eggs collected, open them up and take all the papers out that were in there, and I want you to see if you can match up the letters, uppercase letters, with the lowercase letters. So I would put these two together. Again, I am sorry, boys and girls, I know these are backwards for you, but we have uppercase G and lowercase G. And see if you can do a matching game, and then you can put them back in and mix them back up again. Um, some other ideas I have for you 
Sorry, if you're playing this game, you could um, put numbers in yours. Okay, so you could have maybe a number one on one of your cards and then you could put one dot or you could do two and put two dots and see if you can mix those up. You could also, um, parents, if you have time and you could print out some pictures, you could put a little mini pictures, um, like you could put a fish on one and then put the letter F on another card and mix up some beginning sounds and some pictures together for your kids to find. Um, I've also used this with my daughters who are a little bit older. We've done um, math facts on them. So you could put the number two and then you could put one plus one, a addition fact on another one and see if they can match those up. Um, we've also done, um, for those of you that have a little bit older kids too, we've done sight words. They've uh, put two sight words, one on each card and see if they can match them up and read them together. So that's another fun thing that you can do with your eggs. Um, before we end with our Easter story, I wanted to play our letter bag game with you. <clears throat> and for the letter bag, I thought since the Easter Bunny might be coming, I should wear my Easter Bunny ears. What do you think? They look good? Okay, so these are gonna be some things about spring or about Easter. I have four things for you. Okay, get them all ready here. Get my clues ready for you. Okay, all right, Connor, are you ready for this one? Okay, this is something that starts with the sound eh, eh, and do you know what letter that is? Letter E, good. Uh, this is an oval shape. It can be many different colors. Usually when they come out, um, when we buy them at the store, they're usually white or brown, but around Easter time, they're very colorful. Do you know what it is? Drum roll. You guessed egg, you're right. Good job, I have three more for you. This next one, it starts with a little tricky. This one starts with a D sound. D. You're right. Okay, it starts with a D. Um, let me think. Usually they're yellow. Sometimes they can have a little bit of white or a little bit of orange mixed in. They grow from the ground. I'll give you a hint. It's a special kind of flower. Louisa, do you know what it is? You guessed D for daffodil. This is a daffodil from my yard. When we were doing a nature hunt the other day, I found this, so I thought you might like that one. Okay. All right, I have two more. Um, this one starts with k, k sound. It's a C, okay, just like in Cullen and Corwin's name and Cameron. Case. Okay. This thing starts with C. It's something that the Easter Bunny sometimes brings for Easter. Sometimes you might find it inside your Easter egg and usually has a lot of sugar, so you wanna brush your teeth after you have this. Do you know what it is? Drum roll, please. You guessed candy, you are right. It's a special kind of marshmallow candy. All right, here's our last one, and this is my favorite one. This is something that starts with B. We're going to clip our sound B. The letter B. Okay. Um, this is an animal. It, sometimes you can have them as a pet. Some people do. Um, it's an animal that we usually think about during uh, Easter time. It has uh, long ears. Sometimes they can be white or brown, or black, or gray, or a little mixture of all of those colors. And they're very fuzzy and very soft. Drum roll, please. There he is. Did you guess bunny? This is my daughter's bunny. Okay, so if you guessed bunny, like my bunny ears, then you were right. Good job. Okay, we are going to end our time together. I think, oh, I should I leave the bunny ears on? What do you think? All right, I'll leave them on. We're gonna end our time together with uh, a happy Easter story from Curious George. I know a lot of you like this character. My girls love Curious George. 
So we'll read this together and um, see if you've heard this one before. is George. He was a good little monkey and always very curious. He lived with his friend, the man with the yellow hat. Today, George and the man were going to the park as a special treat. George was curious the moment that they got to the park. It was Easter and the park was full of people. There were so many bright colors and so many things for a little monkey to do. Children were flying kites high in the sky and decorating Easter baskets. They were having, ro having races rolling eggs. Then George saw a small fence with a sign on it. What could be inside? Can you guess from that little picture up there? Kind of like what I'm wearing on my head. You see them? A white bunny. He patted the bunny and he fed it a carrot. But wait, what was this he saw? People were dyeing Easter eggs, all different colors. And George was curious because he had never dyed an egg before. Do you know what curious means? Adeline, do you know what that means? Curious means he wanted to know more. He had a question. He wanted to find out about that. First, he dyed the egg yellow. But then he had an idea. With yellow and red, he could turn the egg, you got it, orange. And with yellow and blue, he could turn the egg green. And with red and blue, he could turn the egg purple. <laughs> Died the eggs as only a monkey can. He did them four at a time. Can you see that? So he's using his two hands and his feet. I don't think people can dye those with feet, do you? Then he painted the eggs with swirls and polka dots and stars, and they looked like brightly colored balls. He even tried to juggle them. Uh-oh, said a man. The Easter bunny is gone. But George didn't notice because he saw a man losing an egg and then another. And more eggs. Uh-oh, thought George. I better grab my basket and help the people find them. George doesn't understand. I think they're hiding them from an Easter egg hunt. See that page? George found eggs here and he found them there. He had almost collected all of them when a boy said, hey, that monkey's taking our Easter eggs. We better stop him. George was too busy that he didn't notice or even hear them. He saw another Easter egg. Do you see that one there? That's kind of strange because a lot of the Easter eggs were very colorful. This one is white. He said, ooh, this would be a perfect one to die. Do you think that's an Easter egg or something else? Hmm. It wasn't until, it, oh, it wasn't an egg at all. What was it? Do you see what it was? It was the bunny's tail. How surprised George was. He patted the bunny and placed bunny in his basket on top of the eggs. Hey, that monkey found the Easter bunny, said a boy. Yay, cried the girl. Everybody was so happy at George. Now the Easter bunny is safe and sound, George, said the man. Can you hide all the eggs you gathered so the kids could find them? Look. George is wearing ears like me. For this job, he was lucky. He was lucky to be a monkey. 
He hid the eggs in all the places a curious monkey would. You see that one? He's putting them in the man's hat. How about there, Emily? Do you see where he's hiding them? Hiding them in the bird's nest. Oh, how about down there, Nolan? In the man, in the boy's pocket? How about here, Louisa? Yep, in the squirrel's house. It was the best egg hunt ever. It says, after the hunt, the man and George all waved goodbye to their new friends. They drove away and the children waved back, calling, Happy Easter, George. That was Happy Easter, Curious George. Oops, oh, sorry, oops. There we are. I almost lost you for a minute. All right, boys and girls, well, I wanna say Happy Easter to you. I hope you find some fun things. I know our Easter won't be this exact same as it is. I know most of you, um, maybe you would normally be dying eggs with your family, or you'll be having maybe a special dinner with a lot of your extended family. And I know for us, we won't be able to do that um, since we have to stay home and stay safe. Excuse me, but I'm sure that you can find some other fun things to do. Maybe you can read some Easter books with your family. Again, you could um, take some plastic eggs and put them around your house for your brothers and sisters to find. Um, and in the meantime, I hope you have a great week. And um, if you want to send me any emails or messages, um, you can do that. Okay, and I hope to check in with you next week. Happy Easter, everybody. Bye.